I am and have been a Terp for three and a half years now, but I'm also a proud Nigerian woman who loves her culture, background, and the family that raised me in it. As a Terp, I've known that college was never an option for me. It was a necessity. My masculine and my father sacrificed a great deal in order for my brother and myself to be successful, and him and my mother, my feminine, wanted to make it certain that we received a quality education so that we would be successful. My mother represents my daughter of the village. Her faith, positivity, and optimism keep me together as a person, and all the above qualities allow her to help me stay calm and push through everything. This is like in the Kanu story. Kanu knew that by keeping faith in both the possibilities of the future and in the ones that surrounded him, including the anteater, that he could help get back something so dear to him. Learning more about education while I've been at the University of Maryland, I've learned the issues in the educational system. How, because of a child's zip code or the family that they're born into, they may not be able to receive the education they deserve. I appreciate where I am every day, and I hope that one day I can use my education to make a difference in society, be it one person or a nation full of people. In this process of attempting to help others make a change and stand up for what's right, I face obstacle in two senses. My family. I value what they have to say and they do push me to choose something that has longevity towards it. Personally, I love doing everything and sometimes I am scatterbrained because of it. Similar to E. Paminitis. He does so many things incorrectly, not on purpose, but his family still loves him nonetheless. In Nigerian culture, there is the pressure to attain a job for reasons such as status, certainty, and to make others proud, which explains my family's thought process when it comes to finding a job and doing things that deal with longevity. The other sense deals with what society may say. There are those who may be against progression and for forming normalcy. If I try to implement change, I may be accused of not understanding the root problem, similar to Lazy Jack. Lazy Jack was always one step behind, aware that he was doing wrong eventually, although at the time, he did think that he was correct. Which leads me to the question, how and when do we find the path we truly must follow to achieve greatness? Do we look to others who may have expertise and knowledge to find this path, or do we look within ourselves? Like in the Golden Water story, I know that I must do what I can for my family, and my ultimate goal is to make them happy. But I constantly find myself at battle within asking whether what I consider doing is truly meaningful in some sense or not. From this inner conflict, I continuously realize a few things actually. I know the type of person I am inside and what I can personally give to people. I'm learning that I am the one who truly influences my own destiny. I have the chance to use knowledge and experience to influence change on a broader scale. Societal issues revolving around children, education, and socioeconomic status are not things I can personally completely alter as I've learned, but I do have the gift of passion and the gift of education that I can use to do something that's bigger than me. Ultimately, I have my personal goals as to how I want to help and make my impact, but as a society, we should all strive to bring positivity and life into our communities by giving back.